It's all fun and games until somebody calls the Combustion Man. Combustion Benders have been part of both Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, but in a very limited amount. In Aang's era, we got the Combustion Man, also known as Sparky Sparky Boom Man, and in Korra's, we got the Dangerous Pali. While it was once said that the ability was really hard to attain, I have a feeling that there's a bit more to it. What if Combustion Benders are reincarnations of past ones? Just like the Avatar, the first Combustion Bender merged with a spirit, a dark one at that, to create these third-eyed monsters. In this video, I will explain where Combustion Benders come from, how Lord Sozin buried their history, and finally, who is that dark spirit living inside each one of them? Now let's get into fighting mode, cause Sparky's about to go boom! Combustion Benders are rare, and quite powerful. In both cases, Combustion Man and Pali could only be defeated when their own powers were used against them. In Combustion Man's case, it was Sokka's mighty boomerang that did the trick. Hitting him right in the third eye destabilized him, and when he tried to combustion bend against Team Avatar, well, he went full kamikaze by accident. Uh, bye bye. Pali's last moments are quite similar, but in her case, it happened when Metal Bender Suyin metal bent her own armor around the combustion bender's face just before she was about to project her destructive beam through her forehead. Both mercenaries ended up pretty much all over the place with the rubbles they left behind. But what makes them so rare and mysterious? See, combustion benders, while being fire benders, it's true, are also spirit benders. Or if you prefer, you can call them energy benders. Their powers, while being linked to fire as the resulting explosions would attest, are also deeply rooted in all things spiritual. Combustion benders are not just children of the Fire Nation, but also the inheritors of a dark spirit. But how did that actually happen? Well, the process is similar to the creation of the first Avatar. As you know, after collecting all four elemental bending, the first Avatar named Wan challenged the spirit of darkness and chaos Vatu to a duel and imprisoned him inside the Tree of Time in the spirit world. This could only be possible when Wan and the light spirit Rava merged together, creating the first Avatar. Since we know that a dark Avatar is possible, as it happened when the evil waterbender Unalak merged with Vatu during the harmonic convergence in the Legend of Korra, and spirits easily turn dark in the presence of Rava's arch nemesis, could it be possible that one of Vatu's allies could have created its own Avatar type? I believe that same dark spirit, whose identity I will reveal later on in this video, might just have merged with another human before the closing of the northern and southern spirit portals. Just like Wan, another human living on the fire lion turtle could have easily borrowed fire bending from it, never to return the power. It is then that this new firebender met with the dark spirit, which promised him the gift of combustion bending. Now, why didn't we hear about combustion benders before the arrival of those two benders? Well, you see, Fire Lord Sozin, Zuko's great-grandfather, had a severe case of vanity. His ego, being as big as his ambition to conquer the world, made him bury most of Fire Nation's history previous to himself. At some point in time, he ordered that the Dragon Bone Catacombs, located beneath the High Temple, be completely sealed off. His goal was that page one of any Fire Nation history book started with himself, as if he was the founder of the Fire Nation. Just like the revelation that the Dark Spirits Kimurikage were actually real in the Avatar comic book Smoke and Shadow, there might be tons of secrets regarding myths and origin stories hidden away in these tombs. Combustion Bending's origin story then might be hidden somewhere in one of those dark chambers. Let's do some fire bending to open up Dragon Bone Catacomb's door and find out a bit more about Combustion Benders, shall we? An interesting theory by Reddit user Jacob underscore Wallace is floating around the interwebs stating that the Fire Nation is responsible for the creation of Combustion Benders in an attempt to get their own fiery avatar, or at least something like it. To some extent, that would be a fine and original theory, but some things don't add up. For beginners, Fire Lord Sozin was hell-bent on destroying anyone who was deemed more powerful than he is, and that included his childhood best friend, Avatar Roku. When a violent volcanic eruption threatened the lives of villagers and his wife's, Lord Sozin, riding his faithful pet dragon, offered to help Roku. But when Roku inhaled poisonous gas and his vision started to blur, Sozin saw an opportunity to get the Avatar out of his way for good. This would be the moment setting in motion the Hundred Year War, just before the Fire Nation's attack on the Air Nomads. 
the element of air being the next in line to inherit the Avatar, Sozin spared no time and ordered a purge. So I highly doubt the Fire Nation would want to tap into the idea of creating an Avatar by pure precaution. A new Avatar would only turn on them as fast as lightning generation. Secondly, while being Fire Nation citizens, both combustion vendors are not affiliated with the royal family whatsoever. Combustion Man is simply a gun for hire, while Pali, as a member of the Red Lotus, wants to overthrow any kind of authority. Both chaotic at heart, they also have origin stories which in some ways denies their role as Fire Nation avatars. Sparky lost his arm and leg as a child when he discovered his powers, while Pali was kidnapped by a warlord and forced to work under him, until Zahir freed her. A tragic past and an appreciation for blowing things up is not the Combustion Bender's only similarity. Besides being forever feet tall, both mercenaries have what seemed to be a very weird-looking tattoo inked right in the middle of their forehead. The tattoo of a third eye. The symbol of the third eye, also called the mind's eye or inner eye, can be found in various cultures and beliefs. In Hinduism, it represents the Agnya Chakra, and it is believed to be the gate leading to a person's inner realm or even to spaces of higher consciousness. If we turn to Taoism, focusing attention on the third eye serves to reach an advanced meditative state by tuning into a particular vibration of the universe. In both examples, the concept returns to this idea of a door to an inner spiritual world. Combustion bending can be said to be a form of telekinesis, where the bender channels their chi through their forehead as they superheat the air surrounding them before aiming that energy towards a poor soul. Unlike the air nomads who wear the same blue arrow tattoos on their foreheads, the combustion benders do not seem to follow any kind of religious group, being a grand total of, well, one member at a time. Eh, don't cry, Sparky boy. While Combustion Man and Police tattoos both represent a red third eye, there are some differences between the two. Sparky's looks much more rigid, having three straight large lines on both sides of the eye. In the case of Pali, we can notice that these lines are way thinner, but also wavy, as if almost alive. There also seems to be an extra smaller eye under her main third eye. If you look closely, the symbol on her forehead almost looks like a miniature version of Vatu. There's something dark lurking in there, that's for sure. What if the third eye is not an actual tattoo at all? It doesn't really make sense for them to need a tattoo to focus more on their beam since they can't even see the thing in the first place. The third eye is a physical representation of the dark spirit living inside them. Just like that time Wan's spirit friend Ai Ai possessed those villagers, spirits leave traces when they get inside a human's inner space. The third eye, then, is the dark spirit's mark, a manifestation of itself still living inside its inheritor. It changes shapes and form as time goes back for two reasons. One, it reshapes itself to match its host, becoming one with its personality and appearance. Second, as we have with Pali's ability being way more master than Combustion Man's, it evolves from one host to another. There's no telling how it will one day look, but I have a feeling it won't be a pretty sight. The first thing that comes to mind when searching about who could be the spirit living inside Combustion Benders was the Dragon Bird Spirit, and then I thought maybe the Dragon Eel Spirit would be a good fit. Those two are very Phoenix-like and could easily be associated with reincarnation, but this would be too easy, wouldn't it? I think the culprit has to be a much rarer form of spirit, one that can also firebend for sure. Not a dragon something, but a pure dragon. A spirit dragon. If you remember that amazingly designed episode retelling the story of Juan, you probably remember that white dragon spirit. While well, a turtle lion gave Juan his firebending ability, it's not the one who actually trained him to firebend adequately. During his time with his newly found friend Spirits, Juan trained with a white spirit dragon. That serpent-like dragon taught him the now century-old firebending technique called the Dancing Dragon. The ancient fighting choreography is mostly known to have improved Zuko's fighting style when he and Aang performed the dance for the dragons Ran and Sha, after being discovered by the ancient civilization the Sun Warriors. Just like most of the Fire Nation's history before Lord Sozin, the Dancing Dragon was thought to be a lost art, until the tea connoisseur Iroh learned it sometime during the Hundred Year War. But what if there was a counterpart to Wan? 
but instead of meeting a white dragon spirit, he met a dark black dragon spirit. This logic follows the same as Rava and Vatu, as there is always a yin to a yang. Also a firebending creature, the black dragon would have taught the first combustion bender the art of explosion. Original Sparky, caught in the crisis between the firebending villagers and the angry dark spirits, would have then been consumed by the black dragon's rage, as they fuse together. And that, my little benders, is how the first combustion avatar was born. I already gave a few reasons why the combustion benders make little appearance to none throughout the avatar universe, but I also believe the reincarnation process works differently skipping generations. After all, a spirit dragon won't be as OP as the original spirit of light, right? So it only makes sense that it takes the black dragon spirit more time to recharge itself than a superior spirit. Another explanation that can complement the one I just gave would be that the skill is highly dangerous. Combustion Man almost lost half of himself when he first tried his powers, so reincarnated combustion benders might just blow themselves up by accident as their powers are revealed. This makes their life expectancy quite low. Sparky and Pali are good examples of that. But what if combustion benders had the same support as avatars? With proper training and schooling, and as it seems to be evolving from one host to another, combustion benders could reach power levels never imagined before. Compared to Sparky, Pali has mastered the ability to curve and somewhat control the trajectory of her combustion beam. Maybe one day we will get to see a combustion bender capable of emitting multiple beams Iron Man style. A better control of these beams could also propel the bender upwards, giving him a a way to almost fly through the air, but in a much faster way than using regular firebending. Future combustion benders could also control when their beam detonates as they would concentrate their chi on objects and set off multiple locations at the same time through the use of telekinesis. Since there's a dark spirit living inside those fighters, would a sort of avatar state eventually be possible for them? I think so. Once the third eye has evolved enough, this could mean real trouble for future Team Avatar. As darkness would fill the combustion bender's eyes, everything in their path could be instantly detonated. Kaboom! Now that's what I call an explosive theory. What do you think about the reincarnation theory? Do you think previous avatars have fought combustion benders before? Keep the discussion going in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.